everyone, it's Allison here, also known as Lasan Faye, and today I am here with a brand new Zen Doodle With Me video. This one covering the days of March 5th through March 11th. And so I just wanted to show you all the plan that I have for this month um, ahead of time. So if you want to have an enlarged version of the instructions um, to go along with everything, this is the order I'm going to be doing things in as the month goes by. As always, um, I do these Zen Doodle With Me videos based upon the Zen Art Challenge, and I'll include a link to the challenge down in the description below. But that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start doing the tangles for this week. The first tangle I have for you all today is from Grofistica, and it's unnamed. And in the example off on the right, you can see that they've incorporated it into a flower. I'm instead going to use it as a space filler and um, show you what I mean by that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create arches that go across and fill your space and between different rows of arches, you want to offset them. So I'm just gonna do three rows here today, and then inside of each little hump that you have, what you want to do is um, make this teardrop shape that comes out from the apex and circles over at the top. teardrop shape that we made. We're going to um, add some curves that come off of them that echo um, the piece um, below them. I do think you could use it as a space filler as I've mentioned you could use it like the example off on the right as a flower um, embrace what you want to do so I'm gonna leave this one here and move on to the next tangle the second tangle I have for you all today is called peacock and I'm currently unable to find um, the original source for the tangle um, but if you do know, go ahead, let me know in the comments below. Anyways, starting Peacock off, you want to start by making a series of lines. Um, I'm only going to do one, and that's for ease in demonstration. Then on this line, you're going to make a little kind of a seed shape. Um, and then you're gonna echo that seed shape around about three times. And then you can continue to add more of them along the line. to 
add these um, on other lines around um, as demonstrated off in the image on the right. And then as an extra detail, you can choose to fill in the original shape just to add some definition. And this is another one that you could use either as a space filler in whatever tangle you're working on, or uh, you could use it as a standalone, um, as demonstrated in the example on the right, and instead have uh, like little wisps come off of it to create that feather-like shape. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities here. Anyways, I encourage you all to experiment but I'm gonna leave this tangle here and move on to the next one. The third tangle I have for you all today is called All About V by Ksenia Volhi Savlevich. And the way that you're gonna do this one, um, it's a chain and it can be done entirely across whatever space you're working in. I'm only going to do one iteration of it um, for conservation of time. But the way you approach this one is you create um, some V-shapes. And you want them to have a slight curve to them. And then once you have enough Vs, you're going to come across and make this parenthetical shape that crosses over the V up above. Or if you're at the top, that just connects the two endpoints. And again, you could use this to fill a whole entire space or just do a simple chain border. Um, there's a lot of options with this one, but I will leave that for you to decide because I'm going to leave this tangle here and move on to the next one. The next tangle I have for you all today is also from Grafistica and is unnamed. And of the three in the picture on the right, I'm actually going to do the far right one. So the way you want to approach this is you want to create, um, these oval-like shapes. And the way I suggest doing that is by doing um, pairs of parentheses that touch each other. And you can make this as long as you wish. Then at the top of each pair of parentheses, uh, you wanna draw a line going up and off to the right. And then on the bottom, you want to draw a line going down and off to the left. Then for your next step, you're going to draw curves that essentially match your parenthesis curve that connect these upper lines together. and the lower lines together. And to finish off, we're just going to add one more curve coming off the top and the bottom, that end, and just drawing a line to connect those curves back to the main image. You can then fill in with whatever details you want um, to take up space. And remember to alternate those details if you want this to look like two pieces twining around each other, like so. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and leave this tangle here with that food for thought. Again, you can add whatever uh, details you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next tangle. The fifth tangle I have for you all today is called By Somnus, and it's by Melda Weiss. And the way you're gonna get started with this one is you're gonna start by making a dot in the center. And then from this dot, we're gonna spiral outwards into what is typically the four corners. And we're actually also going to divide these areas in half. And then from each endpoint, we're just going to draw a curve that comes back in and connects it to the curve on its right. And then inside, we're just going to echo the first line out to add a bit of detail. off on the right you can see that sometimes uh, you can have the curves echo the uh, shorter of the two uh, main curves on the pedal um, outside that's for when you're going to turn this into a tile um, also you probably noticed uh, in my time lapse that I went back with a thicker nib and thickened up the original curves that were in here and that's just because I felt that leaving them the same size made it look really busy and didn't give it a whole lot of definition um, which is why I did that um, but yeah I'm happy with this I want to play around with it some more it'll probably look better if I managed to actually make my outward curves all the same length um, at the very least it'd make it look more balanced um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, leave this one here, and move on to the next tangle. The sixth tangle I have for you all today is called Shell Leaf, and it's by Yuru Chen, um, who I think I've mentioned plenty of times before, and they're one of my favorite tangle creators. So with Shell Leaf, the way you wanna get started is you wanna make this enlarged teardrop shape um, and you can orient it however you want. Um, yeah. So with that in place, we're then gonna go in a little bit from the bottom and make an elongated S curve. And from over here, we're gonna connect those up. Then to add in detail, with the smaller part, you're gonna echo the top curve that you drew in last. And with the um, larger part, you're going to follow the S shape. And as a final um, bit of detail, we're going to go into the top portion and draw lines that go radially out towards the other two portions. To add a bit of detail in there. And this is shell leaf. 
and as demonstrated in the example off on the right, uh, you can obviously turn this into a flower. Um, but yeah, I kind of like it. And I think also this could potentially be an interesting um, leaf pattern, as its name implies, or even an interesting rock pattern. Um, but that'll be for my own experiments. But I'm going to go ahead, leave this video here, and move on to the next tangle. The final tangle I have for you all today is called uh, Pay Tree and it's by Smita Tok. And the way you're gonna approach this one is you're gonna start by making two dots. And then from those two dots, you're just gonna do some curves that come downward in a bit of a parenthetical shape. And you can connect them on the bottom. And then we're also going to connect them on the top. We're going to echo the one on the top with a slightly larger circle or a semicircle. And then to add a bit more detail, we're going to add a flare at the top that you can kind of make from an S shape, just elongating it out. and having it all connect back up. And you can continue to add um, details in any way you wish, uh, but this is pretty much the base shape. You can fill it in, however, and you can see several examples off in the image on the right. But for me, I'm gonna leave this one here and wrap up. All right, that is it for this week's Tangles. Um, I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, lots of flower opportunities, like flower and feather. Uh, but I'll let you guys decide how you want to utilize them best. And I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of these videos from me, uh, go ahead, click that subscribe button down below. I do stuff with Zen Tangling and bullet journaling on this channel. And again, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I will see you all next week. And in the meantime, have a wonderful, wonderful week. <laughs> Bye.